Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. In this video, I am going to show you the lab activity related to the removal of hardness of a given water sample by passing it through the ion exchange resin. This is also known as softening of water sample. So the number of steps involved in this experiment are as follow. So first of all, we are packing our column and in the next step, we are going to pass our water sample through the ion exchange column and we are going to do the titrations just to measure the hardness value before passing the water sample through the column and after passing the water sample through the column. So in this manner we will come to know how much of the hardness is removed by the ion exchange column. So let's see the lab activity related to all these steps. The granules and zeolite. This is the column. I first open this nozzle so that air can pass out through this. And now I first fill this column with the help of the granules. And I will first make a layer of granules in this column. So I'm, these granules are little bigger in size. And uh, this is done and now I am going to fill with zeolite. So here you can see these granules of zeolite. Right now I wet this column so that some water passes through this and the air channels will be filled with this water. Right, and I will throw this water sample which is passed through this in this. One more thing which I bring to your notice, these granules I have already washed and dried. Now I pack this with the help of filter paper. So here you can see this is ready made column in which we have granules and zeolite in two different layers and here in this packed column I am going to fill it with the known hard water sample. So this is the hard water sample. I fill this column and I threw some of the water sample first and now I will collect the water sample which is passed through this column. While it is filtered, I am just going to do the titration part of the initial hard water what apparatus we require i'm just going to show you that so measuring cylinder beaker conical flask standard hard water edda solution which we have prepared ebt as an indicator dropper and unknown hard water so first i'm just going to rinse this burette with edda solution So I am just going to fill this EDTA in the view rate and this is more than the zero point, right? This is just because I just want to fill this nozzle also. And now I clamp it. Now I am going to take hard water or standard hard water which I have prepared. So before using this hard water, I am just going to rinse my measuring cylinder as well as the conical flask. Now I am just going to throw this and now I am just going to have 25 ml of this standard hard water. So here you can see this is standard hard water I have transferred in the measuring cylinder and it is 25 ml right. Now I am going to transfer it in the rinsed conical flask. After transferring the hard water to this conical flask, I am just going to add 0.5 ml of basic buffer to maintain the pH about 10. So here I, am, I have added basic buffer or ammonical buffer to this hard water solution and after that 
I'm just going to add two, three drops of EBT indicator, which is an internal indicator and it gives wine red color. Now I'm going to titrate it and uh, just to determine the end point, I have kept over there a reference solution. Now we are about to reach our end point and here you can see the end point. Now I'm just going to have the final reading of the burette which is 23.5. While we are doing the titration part, this water is filtered through the column. So here you can see water passed through the column. And now I collected the water sample here in this beaker. I will take 25 ml of this water sample which is passed through the column. I will add this water sample in the rinse conical flask and to this I am going to add ammonia buffer solution and now I am going to add EBT as an indicator. Now I am going to titrate it against the standard EDTA solution. Right. So here this is the initial reading. And here I am going to titrate it and nearby I have kept the reference color conical flask. So up to that color we have to titrate it. So the speed of the video is two times. And now Now we are about to reach to the end point. Here you can see the slight change in the color. And now it is done. Here is the end point. Now we are going to check the final reading. So here is the final reading. So from the experiment we come to know that for before passing through the ion exchange column I have taken the water sample 25 ml right and the initial reading of the burette is 0 and final reading of the burette is 23.5 for this titration of 25 ml of water sample. So from there we come to know that 23.5 ml of EDTA solution consumed. After passing through the column, I have taken 25 ml of the water sample and the initial reading of the burette is 17.2 and the final reading of the burette is 39.0. So on subtraction from final to initial reading, I will get 21.8 ml of EDTA consumed against this 25 ml of water sample which is passed through the ion exchange column. right? So from the reading you come to know that some of the hardness is removed by passing through this column. So we are doing the calculation. So for the sample before passing through the column we are going to calculate the hardness of the given water sample. So in the same way we are applying here the molarity equation M1 V1 is equal to M2 V2. So here on putting all the values volume of water sample taken is 25 ml and molarity of the EDTA is this much volume of EDTA consumed for the sample which is not passed through the ion exchange column or we can say before passing through the column is 23.5 ml. Now on calculation I will get M1 is equal to this much. Now I wish to calculate this molarity into grams per liter. So in that manner we are just going to determine the strength of the water sample. 
so here this is the molarity molarity into molecular weight so molarity is moles per liter and molecular weight of calcium carbonate because hardness is determined on the calcium carbonate scale so molecular weight of calcium carbonate is 100 grams per mole so mole is cancelled out by this mole and we will ultimately get gram per liter so this is the value which we get after multiplying these two right and now this gram per liter is converted into milligrams per liter how we are going to do this so on multiplying 1000 because 1 gram is equal to 1000 milligrams and on multiplying i'll get this much right so this is milligram per liter hardness in the water sample is 996.4 ppm fine now moving further and we are going to calculate the hardness in the water sample after passing through the ion exchange column so here we are going to do the calculation for after so again applying the molarity equation m1v1 is equal to m2v2 and now i am putting all the values so volume of water taken is 25 ml molarity of the edta is this much and the volume consumed is 21.8 ml right so on multiplying i'll get this molarity of the water sample and now i'm going to calculate the strength so strength is molarity into molecular weight of calcium carbonate as i told you earlier that hardness of the water sample has been calculated on the calcium carbonate scale and the molecular weight of calcium carbonate is 100 grams per mole and molarity is mole per liter so these two will be cancelled out and i will get this much amount of gram per liters right now i just converted this gram per liter into milligrams per liter so here you can see gram one gram is equal to 1000 milligrams so here i am just going to convert this and on multiplying i'll get this much right and this milligram per liter is equal to ppm right so 928.56 ppm is the value which is observed after passing through the ion exchange column so how much hardness is removed by the ion exchange column it has to be calculated so this is will be calculated by the formula hardness removed is equal to hardness in the water sample before passing through the column minus hardness in the water sample after passing through the column so on subtracting these two i'll get 67.84 ppm so this much amount of hardness is removed by the ion exchange column so this shows that the column is not very effective at all or there are several parameters which has to be maintained over there that height of the column volume of the water sample that has to be filtered from there so several parameters are responsible for the removal of hardness but anyways from by watching this video you can understand the basic concept of the ion exchange column and how we are going to do the calculation part so if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and like share and subscribe thank you all thanks for watching